Well, hello, and welcome back to another scary edition of Ghost Stories Told from the South. I am your host, Stephen LeBooth. I've got some scary, scary stuff for you today, people. So just sit back, relax, grab a blanket or something, get some coffee or some hot cocoa, sit by a fire. Because i got some creepy, creepy stuff to talk to you about today. <laughs> How's everybody been doing out there, ma'am? Yes, yes, yes. We are in full swing of Christmas. But just because it's Christmas don't mean I can find some scary Christmas shit to talk about and scare you too, man. Yeah. Yeah, I'm still kind of bummed Halloween's over. It always comes and goes so fast. But it is what it is. But, hey, I can still tell ghost stories any time of the year. Anyways, guys, I just want to, before I start into the stories, give a big shout out and a thank you to everyone who has listened listened and listens and continues listening and gives me a thumbs up, gives me a likes, five star reviews. Um, just want to say thanks to you guys because I got my wrap up from the uh, the year end wrap up from the podcasting, and <coughs> this year my uh, mem- the membership to my pop my podcast uh, it's growing by by eighty two percent. We are heard in eight different countries, man. Y'all don't know how big that sounds to me. I mean, I'm being heard in eight countries. I'm just a small-time guy doing this out of my house just because I loved it. I love podcasting, and I love scary stories. So I guess you could say I love to fucking talk. (laughs) But I just want to say thank you to everybody. And there are six people out there I really want to thank. I don't know your names because it doesn't give me that information. But there are six people out there who listens to this podcast, Ghost Stories Told from the South. Hosted by Stephen Booth. There are six people that listen to this podcast more than any other podcast. So I'm pumped up and just ready to keep doing this to the day I die to see how many followers it keeps growing and growing. But that's pretty cool. There's six people who listen to me above everybody else, man. I want to say thank you, man. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. And just thank you to all the countries that listen to me. You know, I'm not for sure right off the bat who you are, but thank you. I think some, uh, I think one of the countries is probably Australia or New Zealand, Spain, I know. I know our numbers in the UK are growing. In Canada, they're growing. And of course, they're growing in the US. And I think Mexico, we were starting to get a couple of downloads down there, but... Yeah, it's it's pretty crazy. It's how it's growing. It's a slow, it's a slow growing thing. But hey, I don't mind because I got I got my whole life to do this, you know. So I don't mind, guys. But with uh, that being said, usually I save stuff like that to the end. But I really wanted to give a special thank you to my listeners and everybody. I put a video on Facebook about it. Go check it out. Um, so yeah, just want to say thank you, guys. <sighs> Excuse me. Okay, well, let's get on with some stories. Like I said, even though it's Christmas, it's the holiday season or whatever you want to call <gasps> call it. We can still talk about scary Christmas shit, man. Because I've got some great scary little stories about Christmas you didn't know. You might have, but I didn't know when I read these. But first, I'm going to start out with some lighthouses. We're going to cover Connecticut and I believe Rhode Island. So, yeah, it ought to be pretty good. Let's get on with it. We're going to start out with some lighthouses. All right, guys. Our first story is the Rose Island Lighthouse. And you might remember this lighthouse. If you ever remember the old uh, Ghost Hunters, it's not called Ghost Hunters. It's called Taps. It had Jason, Grant, and uh, their crew. Remember, one of them was bald. I think Jason was a bald one, and Grant was the uh, shorter one. But them two guys used to have a uh, ghost show. They've been here. So, yeah, it's a pretty hopping in place. But anyways, let's get down to it. When uh, the team from TAPS was there, 
they uh, heard some unexplained noises and they saw things and then just the whole night if you watch that episode it's very creepy a rocking chair moves by itself all sorts of creepy stuff but it is considered to be one of the uh, uh, one ghost rumored to dwell in the lighthouse is keeper, keeper Charles Curtis who served 31 years being being beginning in 1887. Could you imagine living somewhere and being in charge of the lighthouse for that many years? Man, no wonder these place, these lighthouses are haunted. Because some of these lightkeepers stayed there forever with their families. And there was tragedy, death, and just just a stewing, brewing pot of gooly goos. Okay. And then uh, overnight guests claim they have heard... Him walk up and down these stairs at midnight and his custom in life and make a throughout in inspection of the uh, faculty. So even while he's dead, he still roams the place inspecting it, making sure everything is OK. Uh, ghost hunters decided to come to the island and find out more about that story and others we've heard over the, that we've heard over the years. Contact between humans and spirits from the afterlife is not as far-fetched as it seems. As uh, the, you know, taps, them guys were plumbers. But it says, as plumbers by day and ghost hunters by night, Jason House and Grant Wilson and their team have worked to track down the uh, pre precise... Pre to track down the paranormalies across the country. That's uh, what they do. Uh, digga, 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 digga. I'm okay. As leaders of the Atlantic Paranormal uh, Society, that's why it's called TAPS. Both Jason and Garrett have made it their life's mission to help everyone who's questioning who to help everyone with questions about the paranormal world and phenoms and ghost hauntings. TAPS is a group of uh, fairly ordinary people, office managers, factory workers, teachers, and even uh, the uh, physician. Mood lighting to understand seemingly unexplained disturbances. Between the video and the audio evidence, the uh, par the uh, personal experiences from the team even the director david mccrudy gets one back of a report from the ghost hunters on the uh, awesome episode two okay now we're going to get into the history of it the rose island lighthouse was built in 1870 and is located on rhode island on Ro on rose island in narrag Gisenti Bay in Newport, Rhode Island, in the United States. The Rose Island Lighthouse Foundation preserves and maintains and operates the lighthouse. One of on oh one of a group. Okay, this is what it says. One of a group of New England lighthouses built to in award-winning design by the Vanderbilt architect the Rose Island Lighthouse was the Rose Island Lighthouse has sister lights at Sabine Point Baham Rocks and the Cl the Cluster Reef the building was abandoned as a uh, foundation lighthouse in 1970 when the Newport Bridge was uh, constructed nearby. Then in 1984, the Rose Lighthouse Foundation was founded to restore and this uh, was a, uh, anyways, it's a plate that's, the Rose Island Lighthouse Foundation was formed to preserve and restore the place and get it back up on behalf of the city of uh, Newport which had reserved it for free from the United States government. In 1987, the federal government listed the uh, lighthouse on the National R Register of Historical Places, which it should be. The lighthouse is 
The lighthouse is today a travel destination reached by boat. For a fee to the uh, foundation, visitors can spend a night as a guest or a week as the uh, lighthouse keeper. Wow. Completing many of the chores requiring to keep the lighthouse in good condition. Man, that would be pretty cool. Get a bunch of your friends together and go live there for a week and, uh, you know, see what happens. Well, that's it on that. Of course, you know, the biggest ghost is that lighthouse keeper. But I can't remember which episode it is, but I might look it up on YouTube. But it was a pretty good episode. This lighthouse is very haunted. I'd be very, very interested in going there. Okay, let's get on with our next lighthouse story. Okay, the next story is The Terror of Man. Block Island, or Rhode Island, Block Island's Southeast Light, the tallest lighthouse in New England, sits 200 feet above sea level at Mohegan, Mohegan, the Mohegan Bluffs. A lighthouse keeper in the early 1900s so hated his wife that he punished, he pushed her off the round staircase to her death. What the fuck? Dude. Could you imagine being that mad at your... Well, I guess, too, you gotta understand, because these lighthouse keepers, that was their job. They stayed at this lighthouse, and if you were out there by the uh, ocean and there was no one around, really, you didn't see nothing. You seen to say your family day in and day out. So I can imagine stuff getting... Pretty tense, but not pissed off enough to push her off a fucking staircase. Jesus Christ. Yeah. The wife, the wife, this wife, however, continues having uh, the last word. Apparently, she haunts the southeast light, marking her displeasure with man well known. She does not bother the, la the ladies, but man had better beware. Witnesses reported seeing her chase men about, look them in their locking them in their rooms and in the lighthouse when she is particularly angry, she throws knives and other sharp objects at them. So if you're a guy, don't go to this place because uh, this ghost will fucking kill you. Ain't that crazy shit though? I mean, really? I don't, man. See that? I just never experienced a whole lot. I think that right there would scare the dickens out of me. I'd run. The uh, keepers reported their furniture constantly moving about. And then they left a small flame under something they were cooking. They found it cooking full blast upon returning to the kitchen. So this woman left, you know, she's like she walked away from after turning it down to a simmer to a low flame. And she came back and it was just boiling hot. The southeast light was moved back in, back 200 feet in 1993 due to soil erosion. Man, that how they move that big son of a gun. Anyways, uh, where was I at? Okay, due to soil erosion. Well, probably because it was right by a cliff. And the uh, cliffs kept eroding, eroding, and it's such a nice, beautiful building. You'd have to move it back. Uh, according to legend, whenever a structure moves from its original place, the haunting, the haunting entity disappears. However, some witnesses say this woman did not get the get that message. Does the keeper's angry wife still haunt the south or east light? You probably will have to go visit it yourself to find the truth. So, go check that place out. Out, uh, out. But if you're a guy, you better watch your ass because this bitch is going to kill you. I don't blame her. Jesus Christ, I can't believe her husband just pushed her off of there like that. That's crazy. Okay, now we're going to go to this story called A Ghost Named Ernie. The New London Ledge Lighthouse in Connecticut. Mr. John Rudolph, the lighthouse keeper's young wife, uh, 
wife finding life at the light lonely, excuse me, tendon, uh, tedious and boring, amused herself by flirting with local fishermen whose, uh, whose fortunes rose and fell with the uh, temperament of the sea. When her life became unfortunately unbearable, she ran off with a ferry boat captain while her husband was ashore of purchasing supplies. When John Rudolph returned to realize his wife left him, excuse me, he became so distraught that he climbed the uh, climbed the sixty five foot tower. Oh my God! Slit his wrist and then fell off when he's what the fuck? I'm sorry for the language, but what the hell, man? Not only did he like fall off and die, but he slit his damn wrist before he did it. That's crazy, man. Then Rudolph's uh, Rudolph's sister, uh, his predecessor, soon realized. That he was not alone. He locked the, locked the doors. Opened. And closed at well. Oh so they the doors. Locked doors would open and close. Whenever they wanted to. And the desk drawers constantly. Rearranged themselves. A fishy odor. Permitted in the living space, and the new keeper felt a bone chilling uh, draft when someone made his presence known. A ghost nicknamed Ernie made himself visible to only women and children, but enjoyed playing tricks on everyone. Tools and other items appeared and disappeared seemingly at will, and the floors and windows were also clean. The Coast Guard was Acquitted with, uh, acqu acquitted with Ernie when they took over the lighthouse. So, when the Coast Guard took it over, they uh, got the uh, ghost in it. <laughs> in 1982, a uh, medium visiting the uh, light revealed that Ernie was actually John Rudolph. Rudolph promised the uh, psychic he would leave but later decided he'd rather stay and keep uh, future keepers company. Those who doubted Ernie's existence received a rude awakening, fishermen stopping at the nearby coffee shop, experiencing their doubts during conversation, found their boats untied and adrift. Well, see, that's him because he's pissed off about some damn person running off with his wife. That one's pretty creepy, man. I mean, not only did this guy, his wife, you know, of course back then, like I said, you're out there stuck. You don't have anybody uh, out there because this place is right on some rocks. I mean, you're out there. There's no grass, no nothing. You're on, on these rocks, like a rock island. And you go to the in go inland to get supplies. Well, apparently when he went to get supplies and came back, his wife was gone and, you know, left with another guy. And he was so mad. He climbed up to the tower, slit his wrist, and not only died from that, he probably died when he fell and crashed onto the rocks. That's crazy, man. That's what love would do to you. But love always makes a good ghost story. <laughs> okay, our next story is Saved by the Keeper. The Penfield Reef Lighthouse in Connecticut. The legend of this light is one of tragedy in saved lives. Okay, well, let's just see. Oh, right here. Keeper Fred Jordan left the light on. Uh, let, uh, Keeper Fred Jordan left the light one day in December to go to a shore. You know, to purchase supplies and stuff like that and do some Christmas shopping. Unfortunately, he never made it. Assistant Keeper Rudy attended watching in horror as he saw the Keeper's boat 
capsize in it capsized and then he jumped into the uh into the lighthouse intending to rescue his boss but gale force winds pushed the boat more than a mile out to sea making rescue impossible he tried signaling but the but keeper jordan was lost to the sea that would suck to die like that not long after that not long after eaton became a head keeper he reported seeing jordan's ghost gliding down the stairs before disappearing and noticed that the uh, daily page in his uh, logbook always returned to the date where john where uh, jordan died stories about stories of, about of keepers seeing jordan's jordan gliding downstairs or hovering over the rocks just before a storm eden eden that's what it is i eden not wanting anyone to think he was uh inventing ghost stories ask each keeper who saw Jordan to sign a written affidavit. So basically he'd have a sheet there and say, hey, where did you see this and when? The lighthouse keepers are not the only witnesses to Jordan's ghost. In 1942, a, fisher, a fishing boat carrying two young boys capsized near the light. The boys reportedly felt something pull them to safety. They walked to the lighthouse thank, thank the, and then thanked a puzzled keeper. And identification and the kids. Ad oh, God, sorry. I'm getting tongue tied as hell tonight. Anyways, these kids were capsizing. They felt something pull them ashore. And they was uh, <coughs> thinking by a uh, puzzled keeper. And identified a portrait of Jordan as the man who saved them. So the ghost saved them kids. See, it's a good ghost. And then another another story claims that a couple lost in dense fog was miserably guided, oh, mysteriously guided to safety by a man in a, a dory, which probably van which probably vanished. So a little dory is just like a little boat. So it was in he was in front of them, showing them where to go, and he just kind of disappeared when they went the right way. Painfield Reef Light is no longer in service. You may believe that Keeper John still rescues those who come too close to the reef. Marion L. Kelly, a former chief, is a professional journalist and editor and web content writer and lighthouse histor uh, historian. Marine, the Mariners have written three themed cookbooks including the featuring uh, featuring this haunted uh, lighthouse so the lighthouse is currently working on a th oh she's working on a third book but anyways that was a pretty good one i mean the guy died not by his own intentions boat capsized he died and now he just tries to fucking save people i mean that's a good ghost right there i don't care who you are Well, I guess if you guys are ready. Sorry, that was me trying to go boom, boom. Sorry if I made too much noise there. Hope it didn't scare you. <laughs> <coughs> okay. Now, these are, I got 15 stories. <coughs> so what I'm going to do <coughs> at the end of the podcast, after I get through with the regular stories, I'm going to tell these uh, three Three stories an episode and save four for uh, the big Christmas special. Because I'm going to do the whole thing Scary Christmas on that time. And believe it or not, there will be a uh, Ghost Stories Told from the South up downloaded the Wednesday before Christmas Eve. So, <laughs> All right, let's get on with the first story. Okay, here's our uh, first story. Uh, sorry if I butcher these names up, because these are like from around the world. So, this is called the Perchita, or called Perchita. 
that's that Celtic goddess is a hard course it is a hardcore Santa Claus and not in the funny way she came up in the uh, Alpine regions around the ah you sucka sucka around the Middle Ages as sort of a tradition a uh, sort of a traditions uh, police she made sure cultural taboos did not get tabooed during the 12 days of Christmas and especially on the 12th night because she likes a college student and gr grams every and crams everything in at uh, crams everything in at the last minute she would roam the frozen countryside and sneak into people's homes. If the children and the servants of the house had behaved and worked hard all year, she might give them a small silver, silver coin. Hiding it under a shoe or a uh, pile. Didn't say pile of what, it just said pile. So I hope it's not under a pile of shit because I wouldn't take it. But it's money, so I guess I would just clean it off. But if they were on the naughty list, the porchetta would slit their bellies open, remove their guts, and stuff their body with straw and pebbles. To get this treatment, you did not have to do much. Girls who had not spun all who not girls who had not spun all their their flax or wool that year would become Christmas straw dolls. Or even if someone ate something on their day of fee, uh, fast other than the traditional foods or fish or girl, cruel, uh, so, so you know everyone was up for grabs. Even if the guys, they said, like the story goes, I was uh, reading uh, some more on it. If the guys even didn't do, you know, like their chores with their paw outside, they'd get slid open. So she's a mean bitch. I didn't get the college thing, though. That kind of threw me off. I don't understand that. Anyways, let's go with the next one. Now, this one is called the Santa Claus Homicide Detective. When he wasn't... Now, listen to this shit. He's supposed to be the, a detective and be the Santa Claus detective. Would y'all quit making all that noise, man? When he wasn't committing crimes such as breaking and entering, the French version of Santa Claus, Saint Nicholas, was quite uh, was out solving crimes. So when he on his off time, when he wasn't solving crimes, he was breaking into people's house and stealing shit. And then when he'd go to work, he'd bunk the crimes. I wonder if he caught, ever caught himself. <laughs> his specialty was murder. Wow. That's a good Santa Claus. And if he was in a particularly good mood, he'd bring them back to life in a disappointingly non-zombie-like fashion. Our such story begins with three children who got lost in the woods. Because, you know, terrible things happen when children venture off into the woods. They stumbled upon a butcher's house and asked for help. He invites them inside, fattens them up, and sends them to bed. Then he gets the uh, Worst Host of the Year award by chopping them up. Yeah, I'm not lying. By chopping them up in little pieces and sticking them in a barrel of salt for petty, petty cells. So I guess it's a Oh, it's a salty pork dish. So basically, ba uh, basically, it's a uh, fucking pork skins. It's motherfuckers eating human pork skins, basically. Well, seven years later, Saint Nicholas decided to go for a walk in the middle of nowhere and also knocks on the same butcher's door. When inside, he asks for some pinty cells. The butcher gets him something fresh. Saint Nicholas gives him a look and says. 
Why did you give me the meat you peppered seven years ago? You homicidal maniac. Okay, that part was uh, made up. He was probably a lot uh, classier about it. Then he sticks his fingers in the right barrel and the three kids magically spring back to life. In some version of the versions of the story, the butcher becomes Saint Saint Nicholas's assistant, Pierre Fontord. I guess murder three kids for meat, and it's good, uh, good for uh, good on your resume. Yeah. So one story goes like that, but then the other one goes all the way like that, but then towards the end, Saint Nick quit. Saint Nicholas uh, says, "Hey, uh, you want to be my f my uh, you know tag along? You can help me fucking kill people too." Okay. Now, see, I've never heard the story of the Nutcracker, and I found it, and it's kind of fucking creepy. So here we go. This is about the Nutquack Nutquacker <laughs> Nutcracker. Okay, sorry about... Here we go. We've all heard of this story. Some of those more cultured than myself might have gone out and seen the ballad. Cute as the dance may be, the story is rather horrifying. It starts with a young girl named Maria. She receives a nutcracker for Christmas which her brother breaks trying to crack a particularly large nut. Don't get any ideas. She patches the doll up with some uh, ribbon from her dress until her clockmaker, good father, can properly fix it up. The night, that night, while everyone was asleep, Maria sneaks back downstairs to be with the nutcracker. But as the clock strikes midnight, things go from mildly uh, excuse me. But as the clock strikes midnight, things go from mildly creepy doll obsession to full-blown horror movie. Rats pile into the house from seemingly everywhere, led by the seven-headed mouse king. Yes, I said that right. Seven-headed mouse king. Maria finds herself magically struck to a mouse's size, but luckily for her, all the other dolls spring to life and start battling the rats. So, this little girl sees a rat king, or the mouse king, with seven fucking heads. She gets shrank, and then she's like, oh crap, what am I going to do? And then the dolls pop up, and they come to life. We'll kick their ass. Well, they start fighting uh, where was I at? Okay. They're led by none other than the Nutcracker. Oh, so the Nutcracker is helping her because she was helping him because her brother broke him. It does not go into go too well for the dolls until Maria takes over her slip, takes off her slipper and chunks it at the Mouse King, distracting him long enough for the Nutcracker to kill him. Maria passes out, and when she wakes up to normal size, the room is a mess, and there are seven tiny crowns scattered around her. Years later, Maria professes her love for the Nutcracker, and the, uh, in that night finds herself doll-sized again. This time it's permanent, and she spends the rest of her days living as a Nutcracker. So, remember that next time you're cracking some nuts there. I never knew that about that story. I've never heard the, uh, the, sorry about that. I never heard any, uh, I never heard the Nutcracker story. So I didn't know, you know, that's how it was. That's pretty fucking creepy though. And it's supposed to be doing with, to deal with Christmas Nutcrackers. That's more of a Halloween thing, I think. <clears throat> but it is pretty cool looking around the world at their different, um, versions of Christmas or Christmas stories and stuff, you know. It's just like in Europe, it never did it over here in the States, but in Europe, you know, in the old country, 
they would tell the kids if you're not bad, you know, a bad Santa would come or Krumpus or something like that. So it's pretty, I, I'm kind of like doing this because it's just, I like reading about other countries and what they do and what their culture is when it comes to different holidays. So, yeah, well, I hope you guys enjoy the show today. I am uh, going to say again, once again, thank you, thank you, thank you to everybody who listens, to everybody who gives me thumbs up, to everybody who downloads, to everybody who gives me likes, to everybody who keeps growing, helping me grow with this. So who think, who, I mean, just think one day, maybe we can all meet each other, find somewhere and just have a little convention in one weekend and get together and meet each other. That'd be awesome. But in due time, guys, but I appreciate it. And to them six people, don't know who you are out there, but you six people that are devoted fans and I'm the number one podcast in your life. I'm the number one podcast you listen to more than anybody else. Thank you, thank you, thank you. It just, I love doing this, and it just amazes me we're being heard in eight countries, and we got diehard listeners, because I'm just a little old country boy doing it out of my house. But eventually, one day, I'll make some money out of it, and then start making a good studio, a scary studio. But you guys be good now. Don't forget now, we are on any, every platform you can fucking think of. I mean, we're on everything. So, if you guys uh, want to hear, then come on and listen, man. I appreciate you. I love you. You guys be good. Don't be too scary now. But we will see you cool cats later. Bye.